let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight O Lord a rock and a redeemer amen <coughs> good evening to every one of you once again I greet you all in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ all over this world God's people are celebrating the victory of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ over death as we celebrate the victory over death it's not only just victory over death it's a victory over sin satan and all the evil powers today i would like to share a few thoughts from the passage that was read to us today it's a very beautiful passage and a powerful passage the theme that i would like to share with you is be empowered by the risen lord <coughs> in fact we have yes we have meditated on this at 11:30 service i would like to share the same with you <coughs> be empowered by the risen lord <coughs> let me begin with a true story <coughs> you will see the picture of a statue of jesus christ <coughs> now there are two big statues in south america <coughs> that is that are those are called christ the redeemer one is a very big one <coughs> and that is one of the seven wonders of the modern world <coughs> there is one more statue of jesus christ which is also called christ the redeemer but it is called the christ the redeemer on the andes on the andes now this statue is erected on top of a mountain called andes in 1904 at the height of 12572 feet now there is a story behind this beautiful statue now it all started with the two countries Argentina and Chile they were both had a border issue and they decided to fight it out so they wanted to wage war against each other as they were preparing for the war <clears throat> the lenten season came since both the countries were there are majority were christians they decided to postpone the war because of the lenten season they said let's observe the lent after easter we will fight it out i know that really sounds crazy that really happened they said let's observe lent <laughs> and then after easter we will fight it out now during the lenten season <clears throat> many were talking about this war we both are christians why do we have to fight it out so on easter day the bishop of argentina bishop benavente he spoke from the pulpit asking people to not only to pray for peace among the two countries but he encouraged people and the churches in his diocese to write to the government and pleaded with people to make a strong effort to stop the war now the churches council met and passed resolution and sent them to the government and when the bishop of chile the other country <clears throat> when the bishop heard about this he also started preaching of the same thing so he encouraged churches to write to the governments so when there was overwhelming opposition to the war both the governments decided to plan something for peaceful talk 
so they asked the mediator at the time king george the 7th was the king in uh, england so he asked him and come and be the mediator he accepted it in 1902 he called the officials of both the countries and had a peace talk now in that peace talk they decided to solve the border issue in a peaceful manner in fact they came to a conclusion and come to a solution and then decided on the border line and not only that someone told the the peace in the peace meeting see since we have made a great decision as christians why can't we continue this why can't we decide that we will solve all the issues between the two countries only by dialoguing with each other so that was accepted now when that was accepted someone raised a question if we have decided that we are no, not going to wage war against each other country because neighboring country what are we going to do with the arms and ammunition then somebody came up with a brilliant idea he stood up and said okay we will melt all the am, arms and ammunitions the guns and the bombs everything we will melt them and make a statue of jesus christ and erect it on a top of a mountain so that that statue of jesus christ would be a sign for the future generation telling the whole world that jesus gave peace to us so they decided on that and they already had a statue and both the armies carried the statue first to the train and then using horses they pulled the statue and after some times both the men of both the armies they carried the statue and they erected on the mount called andes now these are the beautiful words that are at the foot of this beautiful statue peace be unto you we all know that this is the phrase or the greetings that jesus uttered when he appeared before the disciple peace be unto you and they also wrote in a block ephesians chapter 2 verse 14 he is our peace who has made both one and below that these are the writings sooner shall these mountain crags crumble to dust than chile and argentina shall break this peace which at the feet of jesus christ the redeemer they have sworn to maintain now this statue still stands on the mount andes proclaiming to the whole world that christians can solve issues under the feet of jesus christ and jesus continues to give peace to the people now if you look at the passage that was read to us today you will find <coughs> jesus christ appearing before the disciples and empowering them now if you look at the whole all the gospels as well as uh, uh, the book of acts and the first corinthians we come to know that jesus after rising from the dead appeared to many people <coughs> there are many uh, as well, as much as 10 to 11 <coughs> appearances are there in the gospels out of the 10 to 12 appearances five took place on the same day first he appeared to mary magdalene secondly he appeared to the women who were running away from the tomb <coughs> then he appeared to peter alone then he met two people who were 
going to their hometown called Emmaus. And finally, on the same day, he appeared to the disciples. There were around 10. <clears throat> Judas and Thomas was missing. Now, what we see in all these five appearances on the same day, that is Easter day, is that Jesus met people who were crying or sad or upset or gripped with fear. Peter, he was unable to face Jesus Christ. When he came to know about the empty tomb and he came running and saw inside the tomb, it was empty. So he knew that Jesus rose again. And Mary Magdalene, she was sitting and looking at the empty tomb and crying. And the two people who went to Emmaus, they were sad. So much so, Jesus had to ask them, why are you sad? Now we see the disciples gripped with fear, closing the door, staying alone in that upper room. The same room where they had the last meal with Jesus Christ. And that was the same room where they were staying together and praying. It's the same room when on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came down and empowered them. They saw the tongues of fire and they were speaking in different languages. It was the same room. Now that room is still there in Israel. It's a very large room, in fact. Now these people were staying in that room, closing the doors because they were afraid of the Jews. Now Jesus appeared before them and gave them many things that made them to receive the power from Jesus Christ, from the risen Lord. Now I would like to place before you six uh, words <coughs> depicting how Jesus empowered the risen Lord. Let me be very, very brief. And these are the words. <coughs> the first P is presence. Yes. They were missing Jesus Christ. Without Jesus Christ, they were sheep without a shepherd. They were really upset. Now they knew after Jesus Christ, the officials will come after them. So fear gripped them. And they didn't know what to do. They were looking for a time to go out and go to the hometown Galilee. Now at the time, Jesus appeared before them. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the first tool that Jesus used to empower Jesus, to empower the disciples, is his presence. And even today, the risen Lord gives us strength, empowers us, by assuring his presence. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, even as we live in this world, even though we know that Jesus rose, rose again and ascended and sitting at the right hand of God, you can experience the presence of God even today. Because he said, I am going to be with you always. When two or three are gathered in my name, I will be there in their midst. See, there are many times when you can be assured of God's presence. I have experienced that. Though I didn't share this in the morning, <clears throat> uh, I shared it with other people. They encouraged me to share it with uh, others also. They said, you should tell us in the church. So I tell this true story. <clears throat> How I was able to experience the presence of God and continue to experience the presence of God even here in the altar. <clears throat> I was working in uh, Lebanon, Burum, Mulakadai area, and there is one village called Amulai Vail, just beyond Madhavaram. <clears throat> it's a small uh, church, small congregation. I was conducting the Holy Communion service. There was no big altar, <clears throat> just a table. I placed the bread and wine and I'm conducting the Holy Communion service. And suddenly a woman 
started making noise and she started swaying and then i remembered the catechist telling me there was one lady who was possessed by the evil spirit and two days ago he came there and prayed in the house as they were praying suddenly they heard a noise outside they went out and saw a cock jumping and falling down lying still dead so he said your woman is possessed with evil spirit so as i was conducting the holy communion service she started uh, making noise suddenly that uh, catechist uh, he got up and went to that lady and uh, rebuked the evil spirit and uh, he said pisase odipo then that lady said na pisasi illa na satan avdinchi so then only i came to know there is a difference between evil swear pisas and satan now they have already told me actually i was in ministry for many many years <coughs> even before becoming the pastor so they already told me that you don't have to talk with the evil spirit don't ask who is it and where is a cot or anything don't ask for just rebuke in the name of jesus christ so as i was about to say something i was standing beside the table i felt there is some fire surrounding me i felt the warmth i was able to sense that somebody is around me then i immediately shouted from behind the table in the name of jesus christ get out that's all i said as soon as i experienced the presence of the lord i gave the command immediately the lady fell down and they sprinkled water on her face and she got up and started part- participating in the uh, communion service in a normal way see you can experience the presence of god even today many a time i have experienced the presence of the god there is sometimes physical manifestation too you will feel that there is some vibration in your body your body will shake so many a time you can also experience the presence of the lord because he has assured it and on the day easter day jesus empowered the holy the empowered the disciples through his presence the second thing is peace i know i am going fast moses i am skipping many things okay uh, the second thing <coughs> peace yes he not only strengthened them by his presence but he also said peace be unto you peace be unto you he said it twice we need peace in this world without peace it's very very difficult to live in this world and the sad thing is that there will be one or the other thing that will disturb our peace you think i have prayed god has solved this pro- problem on this day i'll be happy very next day something else will happen that will disturb us that won't let us sleep we will be worried about it it was sigmund freud who said <clears throat> you can never experience peace in this world he said there are three things that disturb our peace one your bodily ailment when something goes wrong with your body when you face sick you are very much disturbed then when something happens around you it could be earthquake or tsunami whatever it is price rise losing loved ones many things can happen around us they disturb our peace and mind then he also said when you have a strained interpersonal relationship when you don't have a good relationship with within the family members 
within your own family or in a working place where you live when you don't have good interpersonal relationship you will lose your peace in mind and he finally concluded there is no peace in this world just pleasures that's all enjoy the life that's all in the midst of troubles and struggles but jesus says my peace i give unto you in john chapter 16 verse 33 my peace i give unto you it's not going to be the peace that the world gives my peace is permanent my peace you won't be able to explain it that's why st paul says peace that passeth all understanding now jesus gives us this peace the risen lord gives this peace even today the third p that i would like to share with you that comes out of this passage is that when jesus said peace be unto you he asked them to see his wounds hands and sides that is he gave them proof yes many a time god knows that we are weak we need at times something to strengthen our faith of course jesus rejected the demand for signs when people pressurized him to give him a sign he said i'm just going to give you the sign of jonah as he was jonah was in the belly of the fish i the son of man will be in the bottom of the earth that is in tomb but at the same time if you look at the life of abraham if you look at the life of gideon judges chapter 6 or if you look at the life of thomas they all had doubts abraham doubted we see that in genesis chapter 15 then gideon doubted how do i know that i will conquer my enemy and god gave him a sign god gave sign to abraham and when jesus appeared the next sunday after easter he immediately called thomas come and touch me put your hand on my side then thomas simply said my lord my god he didn't touch jesus christ even though the, there is a picture in santom cathedral and the bottom where they have a small chapel in the place where st thomas was buried you can go and uh, see that still and there is a picture there the painter has depicted that jesus showing his side and st thomas putting his finger into the wound <coughs> he was just putting this in figure that that was not true that is not biblical he didn't put his hand on st tom uh, on jesus christ when jesus said it he simply said my lord my god because he knew only jesus can know what he said the pre- the previous week at that time jesus was not there now a person has appeared and he is telling what he had told other disciples in that person's absence if that person can say what he shared with other people without that person then he knew that was jesus christ dear brothers and sisters in christ jesus still gives us proof signs when you ask in a humble way then the next one is <clears throat> jesus told, gave them a purpose they were afraid they were planning to go back to their own profession fishing now jesus said no i am sending you into this world the very word for sending is apostelos i am sending you in apostelo now that word we know is connected with apostles so from that time onward jesus the disciples were called by jesus not as disciples but as apostles 
Now, it's not only the disciples, the 10 to 11 disciples who were called apostles. You and I are called apostles. Do you know every Sunday we confess that? Whenever we say the Nicene Creed, I believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church, you are affirming the fact the whole church is an apostle. It's apostolic church. That means the church is sent into this world. You and I are sent into this world to do God's work. To do God's work. Catholic means simply common. Church is common to everybody. It's not we are referring to the Roman Catholics. Catholic means common for everyone. In the same way, when we say apostolic church, we are not re referring to the apostolic church. Okay? We are simply saying, as Father sent Jesus Christ into this world, Jesus Christ is sending us into this world to do his work. Yes, God is sending you and me into this world. It's not just the pastors or the missionaries or the bishop. No. Every Christian, every believer is sent into this world to make a change. Either to be, uh, to lead a witnessful life, wherever you work or wherever you stay. And do something to change this world. See, Christians have changed this world in many, many ways down through the world history. You must know that. I can give you many uh, proofs for that how the church chained many evils in this world. You know how missionaries came here in India? And you know what are the evil things that are happening in this India? How in the missionaries brought a change in this world? Because they knew there is a purpose in their life. They knew that God is sending them to India for a definite purpose. So they stopped Sati. They stopped child marriage. They broke the caste system. When the Indian society denied education to the girls, they started schools for the girls. Many things they have done to change this world because they knew God has a purpose in sending them into this world. You also have a purpose. When you are born on earth, God has a purpose for you to be born on this earth. God has a plan for you. Here I remember Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5, which says, Before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. Before we were born, God knew that we are going to be born. And God had a plan for each and every one of us. And it's up to you to Ask God, Lord, what is my purpose in my life? There are primary purposes in your life and secondary purposes also. So whatever it is, you are born with a purpose. Never, never forget that. When you fulfill the purpose for which God has created you, you will have a happy life and you will have God's blessing. The next one is power. Is <clears throat> and Jesus breathed into the disciples and said, Receive the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, here I would like to remind you about Acts chapter 1, verse 8, where we read Jesus asking the disciples to stay in Jerusalem and said, Stay here. You will receive the power of the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, Jesus empowers us through the power of the Holy Spirit. God knew that we are weak in mind as well as in our body. We need strength. That's why in the morning, uh, the other passages, uh, Psalm 118, where we read, The Lord is my strength. The Lord is my strength. My salvation, my song and my salvation. And again, he clearly said that he is the one who empowers us. He strengthens us. 
He will help us to carry out our duties. He will help us by giving us wisdom to do many things in a wise way. So never, never forget the risen Lord empowers us also. He gives us strength. Then finally, he said in verse 23, you can forgive other people. I'll give you the privilege. If you forgive others, the sins will be forgiven. If you don't forgive, the sin will remain on them. So he has given the privilege, yes, privilege to forgive other people. He has given the authority. What kind of authority is that? It's the authority as a child of God. In John chapter 1 verse 12, we read, everyone who believes in Jesus Christ has have the right to become the child of God. You're a child of God. You're sons and daughters of God. Never, never forget that. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, St. Paul says we are fellow workers with God, co-workers with God. And of course, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 20, he says we are the ambassadors of Jesus Christ. So we are really, really, really privileged people. Realize that. Now, Jesus empowered his disciples by using the six things. Same risen Lord is with us too. He empowers us by assuring his presence, giving us his peace, giving us proof also, and showing us the purpose for which we are created. And he empowers us, gives us the power, and assures that we all privileged people. When we realize all these six things, you will definitely be empowered in your life and you will lead a victorious life. Whatever happens in this world, you will not be shaken. There's a beautiful verse in Psalm 16, verse 8, where it says, Since the Lord is on my right hand, I will not be shaken. I will not be shaken. Let's pray. Loving God, we thank you for this blessed Easter day. Thank you for enabling us to meditate on this beautiful passage. And thank you for the message that we have received on this day. The same risen Lord not only empowered his disciples, he empowers you and me. We all are disciples of Jesus Christ. And we are made into apostles. Yes, you and I are sent into this world to represent Jesus Christ. For that, he knows that we need empowerment. And by assuring his presence, by giving us his peace, by proving his presence and his guidance, by giving us the purpose in life and by empowering, strengthening our body and mind. He assures our privileges and helps us to lead a good Christian life. Lord, we thank you for this message. Bless all those who are gathered here and meditate upon the living word along with me. In Jesus' name we pray.